So anytime I see a Shahada, I think, oh man, oh no. <laughs> he or she is about to experience now the, the sectarianism. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you can see behind me, I am in our beautiful, sort of a masjid, I would say. This is the second room we have. So we've really improved it. As you can see, we have so many carpets. Uh, we have a bookshelf full of books. I wanted to make a video with books behind me to be like an Islamic scholar, but come on. I'm just like, I'm literally nobody. Uh, so this is where we chill. This is where Slovak Muslims hang out. If you are a Slovak Muslim, come make Hijra and hang out with us, please. Connect with the community. Let's build it. Anyways, in the second room, we have a masjid. Over the weekend, we had a nice lecture. Actually, the first thing we organized here as a community uh, about the importance of having not just a madhab but someone of knowledge to lead the community because uh, how can you otherwise have a community if everybody is praying differently if everybody is doing kind of their own thing it can be enough in like a basic level but if we want to learn about different things in Islam we need someone knowledgeable so um, that's kind of where we are right now I think this is the next step, so Alhamdulillah, so many things have changed over the past few months. This is really by the will of Allah, this is a miracle, because I would have never imagined to have this place. It really changed the lives of many Slovak Muslims, and um, I hope to continue this work and improve it, and mashallah, one day even buy our own t building or whatever. Um, but we do need to focus more on sort of like, not practical Islam, but yeah, going with the scholars and, you know, if we want to, I want to have someone who can teach us the Quran and stuff like that and we need to find those people. They are out there. So right now we're in the process of registering officially by the government. Alhamdulillah, if that's going to work out, then uh, we can start promoting and doing some activities, some da'wah. And until then, uh, alhamdulillah, we have this place to pray. So this is the most important. Without the uh, masjid, there is no community. You cannot do Islam alone, hidden in your apartment, or you cannot do Islam properly. Like, I know people who have just been doing, like, online Islam for 15 years. What kind of people are they? Like, Islam is a social religion. Without the social aspect, you'll be just like a lone wolf. It's not good for you. It's not good for anyone. And uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, you're a Muslim, but there's no benefit. Like you need to meet other people like you and build a community. This is how Muslims act so that we can leave some something after us when we are gone, when we are dead. Our kids can continue this work. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But at least they will know that their father stood for something. And alhamdulillah, you know, we've got something going on and it's all from Allah. And, you know, lately I've realized like how much little, I, how little I know about Islam. Like I really thought like I know something and now I realize I know really very little. Like I am, I don't know even if I should even speak on the topic of Islam anymore. You know, that's how little I know. So even if you bring people to Islam, if they don't know what should they practice, how should they pray and all this stuff, then that's not good. You know, you need some sort of level of knowledge. And uh, I think this is what's missing. So I'm just very, very careful now. And I think, yeah, I was trying to live this life outside of madhabs, outside of following any specific rules within the Sunni Islam because I thought I could figure it out but it's beyond it's stupid to think like this and um, you have to tie yourself to some specific madhab it's not possible to live like this uh, however you cannot become a student of knowledge like it's not possible as well to be a student of knowledge you have a life probably you not everyone can just study Islam forever that's why you need Sheikh, you need someone to help you, you need some guidance. We don't have it, so this is my next step. I need to find someone like this and bring him in this place in Slovakia. Pay him some money to teach us some basic stuff. I just wanted to share that this room exists. You guys know, you have financed it. So thank you so much and we will be raising another round in 
I don't know, a few months. We don't need anything now, even though some people always write me. There's no need of money here. What we need, we're now building a community. And, okay, that's going to take some time. However, what we need more is people with knowledge. People with knowledge. Like, nothing else is going to help us. And um, I already made a video like this before. But you can see it's improving, this thing. It's improving. We're doing Jumwas. Now I'm the Imam. I'm the Friday Imam on the, uh, you know, doing the Jumwa. Is that normal? I mean, I I thought it's impossible that I will be doing it, but I am doing it. This was my second Juma this Friday. Alhamdulillah, this Friday we'll have a Palestinian guy doing it. You know, I've been thinking and reflecting on Islam and, uh, you know, there's really no other way to do it besides either moving away to a Muslim country and studying under someone knowledgeable or joining some official madhab, which all of these options are out of question for us. Or learning on your own, which doesn't make sense because not everyone can be a scholar. Or following someone who claims to have knowledge, but they don't really have knowledge, which as a river, you don't know, you'll figure it out after a couple of years. Orienting yourself within Islam has been the most confusing thing I ever had to do. I don't think I've ever had to like find my way in something and it took me so much time like this is my third year in islam and i still am picking a madhab and in the beginning you know like everyone who i spoke with told me be careful about this guy then another one told me no you shouldn't associate with this group another group told me no this is the group you shouldn't follow so essentially after some time you build this like like process or this barrier between you and other Muslims like what kind of madhab are you what's your akida you know what's it what do, are, ashari, atari, what do? tell me I had these account encounters where I had this guy I, I asked him to write a blog for, for a website we have and he said quiz question what's your akida and uh, he had, he gave me like a list I'm like who speaks like this? This is dumb. I don't even respond to this. And it really pisses me pisses me off. And I understand it now. I understand these questions. But there's a way to say these things, you know. And uh, yeah, I sometimes look at some of my friends who don't have... Uh, I don't think they have some correct understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. But I don't tell them that, like, straight up. I, it's, it's a process. Somebody has to change their mind over time. And even my mind took so much time to change. And now I'm changing again. And uh, in terms of these uh, orientation, you know, I was in touch with almost any sect, any madhab in Islam. And it's so funny to watch this. And this is such a confusing thing for reverts. So anytime I see a shahada, I think, oh man, oh no. <laughs> he or she is about to experience now the, the sectarianism. Because we say Islam is one, but in reality, there are so many ways... Hey, the Obandis are not upon the Quran and Sunnah. As a river, you, you can't study all this, so this is some new information for you. But then, at some point, you like, wait a second, I'm reading something in the Quran. Okay, I'm not, I'm not deriving my knowledge from it, but I understand like the basics, and you're telling me to do something else. So, that's strange. And... Uh, so after some time, you gotta, you gotta make a choice. You gotta join a specific way of thinking... And then you have the Shia Sunni split. I'm not even going there because that's like another level. But uh, within the Sunni Islam. And within the Sunni Islam you can go in in another splits. It splits uh, infinitely. So there's, it's, it's such a mess. But the mess is not about the important things. Especially one group focuses on Akida too much. I'm not going to mention names. But the other splits between the Sunni Islam are more about the fiqh. Or some, you know, secondary issues. There are some sects who, you know, take you out of Islam, blah, 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 blah. We all know these things. But even those small differences, they are so hard to follow. And that's why you need someone knowledgeable. It's impossible to navigate Islam on your own, in your bed, online, forever. This is not going to happen. You got to stop, man. You got to join the group. Now... You got to make sure the group you're joining, you're either creating it or you join some, someone really good. <laughs> because you can join like really weird groups. Like, um, so I don't know how to do this because 
to anyone who you speak within the Islam, they'll have a bias. Even I have a bias. So you have to kind of take the information they tell you and then filter it out through your own process. Like, okay, this person is Maliki or this person is this. And they won't tell you that. Like, you have to guess it. It's such a subliminal game. It's like a business game. I'm from the business world. So people don't tell you straight up what they are. But you can guess it based on their appearance, based on the way they say things, or based on, the, say, the way they carry themselves. Um, or what they stress about, you know. Are you too much focused on beta? Or are you too much focused on this and that? Like, you can guess, like, okay, this guy is a Sufi, this guy is a Salafi, this guy is a Madhali, this guy is this... You know, and you can kind of place them. But this is the, the wrong thing because you shouldn't be doing this. We're all Muslims, but it doesn't work like that in the real world. So this is what I'm, this is what I wanted to say in this video. In this group we have here, there's so many groups, like in the Sunni Islam, of course. We have everyone, not everyone, but everyone prays differently. Let's just put it this way. Uh, because you have different ways of prayer, you have you can put your hands like this. This is a valid prayer based on the Maliki Madhav. You can pray your hands like this. You can pray the hands like this. So many ways. Um, the Taslim, how you do it, everything can be done in multiple ways in the four schools of Madhav. So we all pray differently. We're not playing this Madhav game here. But for this, so anyone who joins here for Juma, we don't care. But if it's about us Slovaks who are here and we want to play a long game of developing this this Ummah, same thing as they did in Granada, Spain, uh, the revert started a masjid and then after a couple of years and more kids and more families established themselves in Granada, they were able to get a permit to build a huge masjid and then they got a grant from Turkey and stuff like that and they are under Maliki Madhab now but they they are doing lectures and they are really great. What they are doing in Spain, it's amazing in Granada. And so that's something, that's like a, uh, an example for us. That's what we want to do because I can't think of any other group within Europe who started um, their own uh, Islamic, let's say, masjid or education that's not immigrant-led. The only group was this Granada. Which is why it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an example, because all the masjids in the UK or elsewhere are usually funded by immigrants and they have specific ways they're bringing it. So um, this was the only one we, we saw and it's such a nice thing to, to know that maybe in 20 years it's going to happen. Alhamdulillah. So that's all I wanted to say, just some thoughts about Islam, some thoughts about madhabs and things like that. And maybe you can disagree with me in the comments. Uh, this is a sensitive topic, so I know many people have different opinions. Anyways, this is a cool room. Got plenty of books. Don't worry, no thick books. Just basic, like basic, basic books. You would be laughing at like how basic are we. But that's what we need. Thank you so much for everyone who joined this masjid uh, and helped us. And then I'm going to keep posting you like once in two months, I'll make a video about how these things changed and then uh, you'll see the progress. So, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu and uh, stay on to the Deen. <laughs>